the flame and blood and destruction of Pearl Harbor, there began on December 7th, 1941, the most momentous year in all the annals of the American Red Cross. A year in which the Red Cross has met with high honor, the supreme test of its history. The Red Cross was ready at Pearl Harbor. Aiding Army and Navy medical staffs, Red Cross workers were on hand with the sorely needed reserves of surgical dressings and supplies, and the bodies of the life-saving blood plasma, which it had been collecting and storing for months. Through combined efforts of doctors, nurses, and Red Cross, more than 96% of Pearl Harbor's wounded were saved. From Washington, the national headquarters of the American Red Cross, are directed the activities of a vast and expanding field organization whose stupendous war task, undertaken at the request of the Army and Navy, is to look out for the welfare of millions of men in America's armed forces, to serve each individual soldier or sailor as friend and advisor, and as a link with the folks back home, as well as to help solve the personal problems and ease the worries of convalescence in hundreds of Army and Navy hospitals. Backbone of the American Red Cross are its 30 million members, citizens of every community in the land. Surgical dressings are being turned out at the rate of 500,000 an hour by volunteers of the Red Cross Production Corps. To those held as prisoners of war have gone a million packages of food and other supplies for distribution through the International Red Cross at Geneva. The Volunteer Motor Corps, whose personnel is made up almost entirely of women, has been tripled since Pearl Harbor. In hundreds of out-of-the-way posts and stations, its members augment the work of the Canteen Corps by providing special and welcome comforts for servicemen on duty. Delegated with the responsibility of enrolling 3,000 nurses a month for service in the Army and Navy, the Red Cross is meeting the inevitable shortage of nurses on the home front by training 100,000 nurses' aides to take over hospital routine. Another Red Cross function is the teaching of first aid and home nursing to millions of U.S. citizens. Outstanding project of the Red Cross on the home front is its blood donor service, the largest undertaking in all medical history. The Army and Navy have called upon the Red Cross for an increased quota of four million pints of blood in 1943, which means that more than 75,000 donations must be collected each week. The Junior Red Cross has produced half a million garments for refugee children and turned out three million items like comfort kits and games for American fighting men. With the embarkation of the first of the new American Expeditionary Forces, the Red Cross was called upon to assume a new responsibility, to provide for the welfare and recreation of huge armies of Americans on duty in strange lands, far from home. Today, in countless combat areas around the world, the Red Cross has set up its field offices. Here, a serviceman can take his problems to the field director for help and advice. To carry on all the diversified activities of the Red Cross requires field directors whose personal qualities can command the confidence and respect of the men. Almost anywhere Americans are stationed, they can find through the Red Cross the kind of entertainment they like best. In dozens of foreign cities, the Red Cross has taken over whole hotels and converted them into clubs, like the famed George Washington Club in London, where American servicemen can find companionship and hospitality. In whatever part of the world the American serviceman finds himself, nearby there is likely to be a club where he can get a room and breakfast for less than 50 cents and where he can spend his days of leave cheaply and pleasantly. Nothing is more important to the morale of our fighting men than the Red Cross home service, 
which acts as a friendly medium of communication with families back home. Since Pearl Harbor, trained Red Cross workers have given help or advice in a million and a half cases. Best fitted to tell what the Red Cross means to men on the fighting fronts are those who know from experience. If you want to know what the Red Cross does for servicemen, just ask any submarine sailor. When we get back to some foreign port after weeks on patrol, it's pretty swell to be able to drop into a Red Cross club and have some fun. I'm on a carrier in the South Pacific. I got hit by a bomb fragment. And I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for the blood plasma the Red Cross collected. I was on Guadalcanal for almost five months. First few weeks, I used to worry about my family a lot. I hadn't heard from them. But the man from the Red Cross got in touch with them for me. And I found out my wife had, had the baby expected okay. Eight pounds, both doing fine. Another who knows from experience what the Red Cross means is J.B. Powell, an American newspaper man who lost both his feet in a Japanese prison. You'd have to spend six months in a Japanese internment camp, as I did, to understand what it means to men in enemy prison camps when letters and packages of food and medicines arrive through the Red Cross. If the Red Cross never did anything but that, it still would have earned all of the gratitude, all of the praise, and all of the support we Americans can give it. With pride in its record since Pearl Harbor, the Red Cross submits its report on its first year of war and pledges itself that in the future, wherever it may be needed to serve the armed forces, in the Mediterranean or the Pacific or at home, in Africa, the Far East or Europe, there will be found the American Red Cross. <laughs>